In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use my analytic tools for Excel to run a linear regression with coefficients that change from location to location. Before doing that, I wanted to give you an intuition about how this thing works. Here we have a map inside the loop in Houston, Texas, showing the price of houses listed in a real estate website. Those prices are shown in logarithm. From this map, you can see here there are certain areas that have higher prices in red, and some areas in dark green and even blue that have lower price. And that could be just because the houses are different in size. And indeed they are. So what we have here is the lot size, the size of the land where each one of those houses sit. You can see here that towards the southwest, the lots are bigger. As you move towards downtown, lots tend to be smaller. And also, as you move towards uh, Memorial Park, the lots also tend to be smaller. And the same thing you can see here in terms of the house size, the built area in square feet. In some areas, the houses tend to be bigger. In other areas, the houses tend to be smaller, especially towards downtown, midtown, and uh, on the north here. Most importantly, when we look at price per square foot, then we can see clear differences. Here in West U, the cost of a house per square foot is much higher then towards Midtown, Montrose, even towards Memorial Park. As you heard before, the three main factors in real estate are location, location, and location. So if you want to analyze the value of real estate across a region, we need to allow the value to vary depending on location. Or if you're going to run a regression, trying to explain the listing price as a function of the size of the house, number of bedrooms, age of the house, etc., we need to allow the regression coefficients to vary from location to location. And that's pretty much the main purpose of what we are going to discuss here, which is nearest neighbor regression analysis. It is also known as geographically weighted regression. The basic idea is to fit one regression for each location using only data in the neighborhood of that location, excluding the focal location. That's what makes geographically weighted regression different from traditional ordinary least square. Because in traditional ordinary least squares or traditional regression, all the data is used, including the focal location. And there are two basic ways of running a geographically weighted regression. The traditional way, which is to weight each observation in the database in inverse proportion to its distance to the focal location. For each location, we use all the data except for the focal location. But the data for all the other locations are going to be weighted inversely to the distance between the location and the focal location. Another way to do this, a much simpler way, and surprisingly enough, a much better way, is what we call nearest neighbor regression. In nearest neighbor regression, we only use data from the K nearest neighbors to the focal location. So for each focal location, we're going to use the data from the nearest K locations around the focal location. Now, how many K neighbors do we use? That value of K, the number of nearest neighbors, is going to be determined by cross-validation. Here's how geographically weighted regression works. In this example, we have longitude and latitude of several houses, each one identified by a letter. If you wanted to run a geographically weighted regression for that location A, we would use the data from every other location, but weighting each location by its inverse distance between the location and the focal location. For example, the location T would carry more weight than location B because T is closest to A than B. Same thing for S. S would carry a higher weight than X because S is closer to A than X. So geographically weighted regression 
for each location would run a regression weighting all the other observations by the inverse of their distance. Same thing here for location L. If we want to estimate the regression coefficients in the neighborhood of L, we use all the data weighting each location by the inverse distance. So R would carry a lot more weight on the regression for L than S, V, F, or U. N would also carry a heavier weight than B, F, or U. That's geographically weighted regression. And in this case, in geographically weighted regression, every location, we're going to use all the data except the focal location. In nearest neighbor regression, we do something similar, but only using the nearest K neighbors. So if you wanted to run a regression for A, and if you want to run the nearest four neighbor regression, we would use data only from P, J, S, and T, the nearest four neighbors to A. To run the regression for location B, we would use data from X, D, I, and G, the four nearest neighbors to B. Now, the reason why nearest neighbor regression works well is that by fixing the number of nearest neighbors, that forces us not to use too much data in dense areas and to consider a broader neighborhood in less populated areas. And that would reduce the bias because if we use just the inverse distance, locations in highly dense areas would have a lot of data. The nearest neighbors, very close neighbors, would carry a lot more weight than anybody else. While in the nearest neighbor case, every location would have the same number of observations in their regression. Now, how do you find the number of nearest neighbors? How do you define K? That's very easy. You do this by cross-validation. You set up a certain value for K, run the regression. In other words, for every location, run the regression with the nearest K neighbors around the focal location. Use that regression to predict the dependent variable for the focal location and measure the predictive fit. How well the neighbors were able to predict the value for the focal location. Measure the predictive R square and the value of K that produces the highest R square is the best number of nearest neighbors. So what do we get from this fairly simple idea? We get a very flexible regression analysis where the regression coefficients vary geographic from location to location which makes it very useful for real estate kind of analysis or for retailing where location is important. It allows us to make predictions at one location based on the data of its most relevant neighborhood. And you get a regression model that is optimized for predictions rather than fit. Because in this particular case, the selection of K was based on how well neighbors were able to predict each one of the focal locations. The definition of the nearest neighbor regression was done based on predictions rather than direct fit. Now let's see how you can run a nearest neighbor regression using my analytic tools for Excel. For that, we're going to open my analytic examples. And if you look across all the tabs, you're going to find this one, local geographic regression. And we're going to use this data. What we have here is a large sample, about a thousand houses sold around Chapel Hill in Orange County, North Carolina. And what we have for those sold houses is their location, longitude and latitude, sales price in log, this is the actual sales price, the lot size in acres and logs, size of the house in square feet, again in logs, number of bedrooms in logs, number of bathrooms, in logs, number of other rooms in logs, number of garage, and the age in years. In addition to that, we have two observations here where we don't know anything. The only thing we know for locations one, two, and three is their longitude and latitude. And this particular tool allows you to make imputations. If the dependent variable and the predictors are set to zero, what the tool is going to do is to estimate the regression coefficients for these locations based on the data from their neighbors. If you have the predictors, but the dependent variable is set to zero, then the tool is going to make an imputation of the dependent variable. In other words, based on the characteristics of this particular home 
and its location. It will make a prediction of the log price. What would be the log price of F house given the regression coefficients in that particular location? Now to run the nearest neighbor regression, we go to add-ins, Kamakura Analytic Tools, Local Geographic Regression, and we are going to use one particular type, which is the nearest neighbor regression. And you see here that it allows you to have up to 5,000 rows and 50 columns. The data is already highlighted. Our data goes from A1 to K1039. Okay. Okay. And it's telling us that there are seven predictors available for us to use in our regression. We're going to use lot size, the size of the house, bedrooms, garages, and age. You can either specify the number of nearest neighbors to use or allow the tool to pick the value of K, the number of nearest neighbors, that maximizes predictive validity. And here we have the tool found that the best predictive R-square or cross-validated R-square is obtained using 52 nearest neighbors for each location. And with this number of nearest neighbors, we get a predictive R-square or cross-validated R-square of about 88%. If you recall, locations 1, 2, and 3, we did not know the predictors nor the log of sales price. For these three locations, the model had produced an imputation of the regression coefficients. So what we have here are the regression coefficients. Here we have the intercepts, the coefficient for lot size and logs, coefficient for house size, log of square feet, coefficient for log of bedrooms, garage, and the age of the house. For these three locations here, we didn't know anything other than the location. So the tool does an imputation of the regression coefficient. And on this line, we have the characteristics of the average home in Chapel Hill in that area. And since we knew the predictors, but did not know the dependent variable, in this particular case, the tool made a prediction of the dependent variable. With this data, we can use a very useful tool from Excel to map the regression coefficients. I'm highlighting the range containing my regression coefficients. And I'm going to go to Insert, 3D Map. And what we're going to get here is a map of all the regression coefficients. And as I said, those are based on data in Orange County, North Carolina, more specifically the area around Chapel Hill. And for example, I can plot or map the coefficient for house size. I'm going to use a heat map showing the average coefficient around every region. Let's make the map slightly translucent. This is how much a square foot, a log of square foot is worth. So since our dependent variable is log of price and the predictor here is log of square feet, what we have here is the price elasticity for house size. And the places where a square foot is more expensive are the ones shown in red, while in green and dark blue, we have the areas where a square foot is less expensive. We can take this out and let's look at the intercept. So the average value of a house after accounting for the predictors that we had considered. So after accounting for everything, houses tend to be more expensive in the areas shown in red and orange and less expensive in the areas shown in green and blue. So that's essentially how nearest neighbor regression works with my analytic tools for Excel.